Hello everyone and welcome to Rebel Way. My name is Andrew Sutherland and today we're going to be going through a project by Burke Erdag and it's a spark and smoke simulation similar to the sort of effects you see throughout Star Wars. If we jump into Houdini you can see we've got a plume of smoke and these sparks flying out and we've got one two three four five slightly different setup so i'm going to focus on this first one and then i can show you thereafter how how burke randomized some of the settings to give some variation throughout this project so let's first jump into the spark setup and we're starting with a simple sphere The sphere is set to polygons, it has a frequency of 32, so we've got some resolution to work with, and the uniform scale is turned down to 0 0.1. Then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put down a mountain top, and we're going to distort this sphere to give us these this deformation. And the reason we're doing this is that we're going to actually use this deformation to trail some velocity so if i click on to this mountain node you can see we're animating the height so on frame one we've got a value of zero and on frame four we've got a value of 1.73 and if we trail that we're going to create some velocities but first we're going to clip this node and make sure that we don't have any any of this the geometry is not going below the floor and I'm just going to delete these because these are disabled and we're going to trail that deformation which is going to give us a velocity by changing this from preserve preserve original to compute velocity from there we're going to put down a null and call that out blast and here we have a wrangle and what we're going to do is we're going to take those points and we're going to give them a random value between 0 0.05 and 1 and so yeah so there's so each particle has a has a bounce value of that and that's going to be read in by our by our dop network so jumping into the dop as you can see we can see that bounce attributes on our ground plane and on this ground plane, we have these values. What the friction there, I believe the default value is one. And if we, of course, go up to our pop source, we're sourcing in, we, we're sourcing in the first uh, context geometry. So that's this coming in here. And we've got, for the first four frames, we're emitting particles so as you can see we're going to emit for those first four frames and then thereafter we're going to stop that emission so you can see there on frame five it's zero and on here it's one so we're just turning that on with this expression and we've got some variation on the life expectancy well the life expectancy is uh, is um 1.5 and the life variance is one Attributes here, we're inheriting the velocity, and that's value set to 12, and some variance set to 0.2 there. Nothing there. Then what we're doing is we're creating a pop force, and we're only affecting those values if they are above 0 0.025, then they have an amplitude, the amplitude is set to zero. So everything above um has no noise and just these ones at the floor have an amplitude of zero yeah so we're sitting at zero and everything else has a, has a value of one we've got the swirl size swirl scale roughness and offset and that's that for the pop force onto the pop drag similar to what we saw earlier we we're fitting the range of the air resistance between 1 and 2.5 and from there the pop solver our sub steps are set to 1 our collision behavior and yeah we're not really changing anything there 
we're merging that with the ground plane always make sure your ground plane goes in first and then your pop solver in second and after that we put a put down a gravity almost its default value of minus nine from there we have got an output so let's just always make sure that 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 um once we're outside of here that it's reading in this last output node from there we're putting down a time blend and the only thing of significance here is we're interpolating in between frames so it's almost like um calculating and like a like a sub step between frames it, it uh, houdini knows what to do with um with these particles should we like time remap it or something like that so i should have shown here's this is our simulation from the pop net and as you can see here on this frame we've got some particles going beneath the floor so we're clipping those to get rid of everything below zero and once again we're putting down a trail node this time set to preserve original and we're trailing these particles by a value of two so if but they they have the same um, id attributes so if we add an add node and we set that to group by id by attribute id and we can now connect those trailed points and as you can see their velocity in this initial frame was higher so we have this longer point and as they travel through and their velocity lowers we have shorter lines bursting out like this and what we want to do is we want to copy some sparks onto the very end of of this of these particles and we're going to merge that with so these lines and then here we're going to create something else in this case it's this spark and we're going to copy that to these points here and they dynamically changing their size and we're merging that with the original lines and then all together we get this spark these sparks not just lines but also sparks so if i go up to this line here you can see that we've got a line just in this direction and with a length of well we're animating that length over time so on the first frame it's 0 0.3 then it's scaling up a bit on the third frame we've got a value of 0 0.3 and if we go over to the seventh frame we have a value of one and then two on the on frame 13 so we just animating this up like that and then what we're doing is we're creating an attribute called mask and we've got dollar pt divided by dollar npt and we're setting a color mapped onto this attribute mask so it's sort of fading between this orange color and black then what we're doing is we have an add node and we're setting that to a point so we have a single point there and we're replicating this point with a point replicate the uniform scale of 0 0.2 no noise in this case and a, a quantity of five so if i zoom in here you can see we have five points started with this one initial point and then we replicated it so we now have these five and we're going to copy this line onto those points so we have this sort of spiky spark thing happening and then we're going to copy that onto each one of these points and if we go to this copy um this copy node you'll see we have an expression here and what we're doing is we're taking each point id randomizing the values of those between 0 0.25 and 0 0.1 and we multiplying that 
with the length of the velocity. So this is the length of the velocity in x, y, and z direction. And we're multiplying that with this range that we set here. And then once we've done that, we're going to multiply that value down by one. So if I increase this to, let's say one, we're gonna have way too bigger particles. So as you can see, we just wanna multiply that down to fit our scene. And and here, a similar thing, we're fitting the range of the, of the particle IDs between 0. 0. 0.025 and six. And you can see here, we're negating the direction by minusing one. So if I remove this minus one, you're gonna see that they flip in this direction and we want them in the other direction. So we're minusing, timesing by minus one, which will negate that result. Same thing here. Um, we're just doing it. We, we're randomizing the, the, the ranges on the rotation between minus 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So if we play this through, you can now see that these sparks rotate and they scale along with the velocity and they fit the scale of our scene. Cool. And we had those lines we created earlier. And what we want to do is we want to merge those two together. So we now have this line with these sparks on the end. Well, we want to make sure that we know, know um, none of our sparks are going below the ground. And you can see we're just using a clip node to fix that up there. After that, we're going to create some attributes. So the most important one probably here is that the value that the alpha is being set to a value of one and we're minusing the age. So as the particles get older, as their age increases, as that attribute increases, we're subtracting that from one. So over time, we're going to get them fading on here. So value of one minus the age and that's going to give us the values of this alpha attribute and then here we're saying we're setting the color to to the age as well and here we're remapping those values with this ramp here we're setting the p scale and we're fitting those ranges and once again we're using a ramp to alter that attribute then what we're doing is we're mapping some colors onto that based on the color color attribute and we now have this cool spark effect we can cache that out to disk with a file cache it's a pretty self-explanatory you just save it to your hard drive cache out the frames and we're done with our first spark effect let's just run a quick flipbook and it's really fast as you can see we have this cool spark going pretty cool next thing what we want to do is we want to set up a smoke simulation and this is a really simple smoke sim we're going to start with a source and in this case we're getting that initial um, out blast if you remember correctly we created a null up here so same thing we're reading in this and we got a null here so we can copy this and we can paste that into our object merge which will import that data we're also adding a torus and we're animating the scale between frame one and frame six just to give us some outward expansion like that and we're trailing that so we have some velocity we're merging that with our original spiky shape we're clipping it so it doesn't go below zero we're putting down a polyfill because if you notice we now have this open geometry at the bottom so if we put down a polyfill we close that up 
and we're going to put down a pyro source node which is going to fill this geometry up with these points and we're going to create two attributes density and temperature they have a particle scale uh, well the particle separation and we're getting that information well we're copying we you can copy paste this value into our dot network which i will jump into later just so that we respect the resolution of our source and our simulation and as you can see here we have this particle separation set to 0 0.01 um, and we're creating two attributes density and temperature both set to one and the next thing that we're doing is we're transferring this velocity onto these points here so we're using these points in this pyro source node and we're transferring the velocity onto those points from there we're going to noise up those attributes we're noising up the density and the temperature and and we're just going to add some noise to our velocity and then this point wrangle we are say taking our current velocity and we're adding an upward value of one so the velocities might be going out here and here and here but we want to add an overall upward velocity to our original velocity and that's what we have here from there we're going to rasterize those attributes as you can see this voxel scale is the same voxel scale that we have here and once we dive into the dop network we're also going to set that value to 0 0.01 and we'll see that in a moment Coming back here, we've got a particle scale set to one, minimum minimum filter size of 0.75, the velocity. So if we check here, we have density, temperature, and V. So let's jump into the DOP network now that we have our source um, created. And this is a very simple, simple pyro simulation. One thing to note, Burk has changed the time scale of this simulation to 2.65. So this is almost three times faster than, than, than usual. The default would come set like that. And Jesse has changed that up a bit. So if we dive inside, super simple. We've got our smoke object and you see that value of 0 0.01 if you want to you know you can right click here and copy parameter make sure that this rasterize value is pasted here and this value is pasted here so if we were to change the resolution of our simulation we don't have a super high res source and low res, you know, it's just, it, it's better to make sure that they are all somewhat linked. So we're reading in our smoke object that's going into the pyro solver and we have our volume source. On our volume source, we are reading in, reading in this out density. So if we come back here, that's this nil out here. We're copying that. We're pasting that in here and we're emitting for only the first seven frames. So we have a burst for the first seven frames and thereafter we're no longer sourcing any data. Of course, this is set to source smoke. And if you are creating, a, 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 um, so this is set to source smoke. And we're reading in the density and the target field for this one is divergence and divergence what divergence is is like the expansion of gases that you would see like an explosion or something like that that sort of spreading out is known as divergence and so we 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 got a value of two here and we're reading in the v and that is going into the velocity field uh, quite a high value of 12 
this is set to add add and add um, the density going into the density of 1.5 and a temperature of 1 and this the temperature is set to pull with a strength of 25 onto the pyro solver and you can see we have some dissipation just a little bit of 0 0.005 some disturbance of one. We go into disturbance. You can check those values out here. Um, turbulence of 0 0.2. Swirl size, gain, pulse length, seed levels, and so forth. So these are just the settings that we have to break up our smoke plume. We've got the ambient temperature set to 300 reference temperature 650 buoyancy of one and gravity minus one and the value is the default under advanced resizing sparsity advection mac mccormick it's often best to actually change this to bfcc and clamps just a little bit more accurate advection but in JC setup, I know he hasn't done that, but it doesn't matter. Jumping back out, we're going to then cache this simulation in this node here. We're reading in with an import fields node. We're reading in that DOP network. So if we were to copy this, paste here. And of course we want to mask that dop node so that's here pyro paste that there and we're reading in these fields although all we really need is the density field and we cache that out to disk save that on our hard drive and click on save to disk as you can see i've cached that to disk and i've just run a flip book here and we have this really cool looking smoke simulation for a simple setup you can see how detailed the smoke is um looks really cool and one thing i forgot to uh, mention is that after we cache the disk we just have this post process node the density is set to 10 um, and yeah this is just kind of setting the, the 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 density essentially of our of our simulation you can see we've increased the density and thereafter we've got a time shift node and we're just reading in the current frame so dollar f plus three and that's just going to shift our simulation forward by three frames so we're going to be sharing this file but as you can see we have the same network and it's duplicated a number of times so if you're following along at home all you would need to do is make a copy of this jump inside all you'd need to do is make a few tweaks here and there something like the height node change the element size change the offset change offset change octaves change this value a bit some roughness and that's about it for the mountain node and then if we dive into the pop simulation and uh, the birth rate we're going to change this constant birth rate a bit life expectancy life variance you know make small tweaks to to these settings we can change this value on the pop drag something like point point five you know just small tweaks here and there even on our gravity we can change this to something like minus three just make a few wedges and check out the results We'll be sharing this file so you can see the exact settings used throughout this project. 
The only other thing that is drastically different is on this pop source, we're actually reading in our actual sparks. And this time, so instead of using the that that geometry with uh, with the with the torus, we're actually reading in this out sparks. So we're taking this node, and in the object merge, we're getting that, and same thing that we had before, rasterizing those attributes, and. That is going into our simulation. Of course, this one has just been simply transformed up to the top. And another thing is that we've actually got an additional pop simulation. So on this one, we've got two pop sim here. Let me hide everything else and just take a look at this pop sim. We've got one here. And this one, we've got this really spiky look. So on this one, all we're really doing is that we're emitting a very small amount of particles. So what we're doing is we're lowering this constant birth rate. As you can see, this value is going to emit 200 particles per second. If we just hover over, you can see exactly what that's doing. And so it's only doing that for the first three frames. So if I turn off this pop replicate, you can see that we're just going to get like 12 particles emitting here. And then we're going to put down a pop replicate node with a constant birth rate of 700. And we've got some noise here. And with that turned on, we now have this spiky particle look. And once again, this has got the exact same setup with the sparks. We're copying onto those lines, we're merging them all together. So we now have this spiky look mixed with our previous particle sim, and we have spikes and normal sparks. We cache that out and we read those sparks into this object merge and we use the same setup we did before power source to create those attributes you know transfer the velocity add some noise rasterize those attributes and exactly like before this then goes into our smoke our volume source we run our smoke simulation and cache it out to disk. So if we do a flip book of that, as you can see, this is our last result. Just a few tweaks and that additional pop sim. And we now have this pretty cool spiky look here mixed in with the exact same setup that we had before. When it comes to rendering the scene, it's quite straightforward. So what we have on our sparks geometry is just a material constant. So if we jump over here, so we're in the material network here and all we have is a constant and that's going to pick up all our colors that we've set in SOPS, the P scale that we set in SOPS and our alpha. And we're just putting a white material. So it's not going to change the colors. It's just going to multiply by this white number tint with point color. So with this ticked on, it's going to pick up the original color of our points. And then for the smoke, we have this post process node, apply look and assign render material ticked on. But if we want to make sure that we actually have a shader that we, if you want, might want to do, make some tweaks on the shader, you can click this. It's going to drop down a material and it's going to create a pyro shader for us and it's, and it's it's picking up our settings from the post process node so on our mantra node for the sparks you can see that we're reading in the sparks 5 um of course we have a whole bunch of so this is going to be for the first sim the second third fourth and fifth and in this case we're looking at the fifth 
So we want to read in the sparks and we want to mat out the smoke. So the smoke is is um not rendered, but it is it's gonna um obscure certain things in our render, and that's why we want to put that into the force mat. Of course, it's reading in all our lights, and we just saving that out to our disk. Same thing for the smoke. Slightly different settings, I believe. Yeah, different settings to be faster. Um, of course, reading to disk and under objects. This time the reverse. This time we've got we're rendering the smoke and we're force matting the sparks. And that's for rendering. All you need to do is come up to render and render to disk. So I've rendered out my sparks and smoke and I made a one change which is on this color node, I changed the range from one, I believe it was one to 1 1.5. And it just gives me a little bit more variation in these sparks. So if I change it back to one, you can see it's quite dark and I wanted a bit more variation. So I tried 1.5, you could even maybe try two. And I just found that that gave me a better looking render once I got to compositing. Talking of compositing, we've got a cop network down here and if i change to my composite view and i dive inside we have this comp here and first thing i'm doing is i'm reading in our smoke i'm reading in the sparks and i'm adding those two renders together which will give us this from there I'm just putting down a contrast node and that's got a value of two a levels and limit, and the limits is just going to make sure our values are manageable from there i'm going to create some glows using a blur set to gaussian blur and on this one i've got a value of 200 which is going to give us this result on the next one i want to halve that so in this case, not halved, I've got it at 50. If you want, you could try 100. And essentially what we want to do is we want to layer these up. So this one has got 50 and this one 20. Usually I go 200, 100, 50, 25, something like that. And then what we want to do is we want to layer all those glows on top of each other and combine that with our original. So we've got our original, the smoke and the sparks. And then we've got, and then we've got these all layered on top of each other under the layer mode. I've got it to add because light is additive. So we are adding these lights together and under transform under the weight, I'm just changing that weight value per glow so the first one has got a weight of eight you can if you depending on your reference or the look that you're going for you can play with these values so on the first one i've got a quite a high value and then this one halfway and then slightly lower and from there i wanted to render this out as an srgb sequence because i render in the aces color space So for that, I put down a cop vop. We dive inside and we're taking our red, green, and blue channel. And from there, a float to vector. I don't need this. And then I've got an ICIO transform node. I'm reading in ACES and outputting sRGB. And then we, of course, we needed to transform that back from vector to float. So float to vector and RGB, our red, green, and blue channels. We dive back outside and from there I can just render this out. I can render this out to disk. Then what I did next is I just duplicated this and loaded in each spark burst. And I transformed using an X transform node, which is exactly like the transform node in SOPS, um, except 2D and I've scaled it down by half i've halved it and as you can see 
you can just move this around so I've put this up in the top corner uh, these in the bottom corners and this one in the center and then just like before using another layer node this is time I'm using over I could also set this to add mode and I wanted to put a black background down so I just loaded a color node and once again another layer and I made sure that the color went in first and these this composition on top once again the aces to srgb because I was reading it in from here so before the color transform and just like before reading that out to disk I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.